Do, do, do. Let's see, 9, 25. Whoops, I'm off to a good start. So today is Monday, not Wednesday, but I'm posting it today. Terrible noise. What's up, everybody? My name is Russ with rwgresearch.com. So here we are again. We're back at the whiteboard. Um, so I've been trying to keep my videos short and sweet, but I'm afraid they're going to get slightly longer. If you're interested in what I'm doing, you will want to watch these videos. I'll still try to keep it short, but you should really watch everything I'm presenting so you can argue the points. Constructive criticism is welcome. Um, negative criticism isn't helpful, but if you want to post it, it's your opinion. I believe in free speech. Just don't curse me out down in the comments because I usually delete those because kids or family members might read the comments. So keep that in mind. Okay, so the, I did a terrible job last video and I deleted the ha second half of it. It was a bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, it's a good thing I deleted it because I changed my thoughts anyway. That was all too early to be presented and so I deleted it. Uh, and my ideas have are not developed with what I was trying to explain. So here we go. I have a list of things to talk about. So forgive the dead space in here. I'll try to delete it if it's long. But we're going to we're going to discuss stuff that we've discussed already and then some. And the point of these videos is to make you think and to make you look at stuff slightly different. There is one principle that you cannot you cannot disagree with in order to understand what I'm trying to show you. Okay? If you disagree with it, it, you won't understand what I'm telling you. So here it is. Okay? I'm going to present this in air first and then I'm going to bring it over to a battery. Okay. Oh man. All right. I'm going to try to do this simple because we've been through this before. Okay, these are air tanks, okay? I'm not even going to talk about the size. It doesn't matter right now. All right. Um, we are going to say there's a thousand. Okay, PSI. Okay, and then there's zero. So the blue is my, um, set this stuff down. Blue is my starting. And we're going to go ahead and use purple as my finishing. So look, if I had two air tanks, and they, this one has a thousand psi, this one has, a, has, has this one has a thousand psi. Okay, this one has just a pipe. Let it be big. Let it be small. We're not going to talk about time right now. It doesn't matter. Here we have a motor in the line. Okay, so. If I open the, if there was a valve here, right, if I open the valve, all right, there would be 500 PSI here and 500 PSI there, right? This is logic. This is simple physics. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to bring up. In order to understand what I'm telling you, you have to let go a little bit of your electrical understanding, your electrical engineering, okay? And you have to think about physics. All right? There's one reason why I say that. You're not going to understand what I'm telling you if you don't. Okay? So, if you can take math and you can engineer something with electronics and make it work, days are happy. Doesn't mean physics agrees with it completely. It just means the math works well enough for you to design and engineer something. It doesn't mean it's the only way it is. For example, I'm only going to briefly talk about this and then you can do your own homework. Okay? If I have a capacitor, yeah? Can you guys see that? All right. If I have a capacitor, electronics engineering says, okay, that current will flow through a capacitor. Okay? 
All right. Electrical engineering says that you can pass current through a capacitor. Physics, okay, says current cannot flow through a capacitor. I mean, this is not my thought. This is physics saying current cannot flow through a capacitor in physics. But in electrical engineering, mathematically, we use it all the time. You can even measure it with a meter. Theoretically, I'm not going to do that demonstration. You can go see somebody else who did that. Anyway, the point is, is that we're talking about physics. So if electrical engineering says you can pass current through a capacitor, then we're already on the wrong foot. Okay, because I'm, I'm demonstrating capacitors and inductors, and that's it. Now, I'm not saying that a lot of the laws in electrical engineering doesn't fit this model and isn't used here. That's, a, that's also not the way I'm trying to describe this. I'm not throwing away electrical engineering and all the stuff that goes with it. I'm not doing that. I'm just trying to present you an idea in a different thinking that will allow you to understand how these systems could potentially work. Okay? <coughs> now, once you understand this, then you can start thinking physics. Okay? We're talking about physics here, not electrical engineering. Let's move on. All right. You have two capa you, well, you have two capacity of tanks here. You have two tanks. All right? Physics says don't count uh, the pipe diameter and the air that's stored in the pipe because that will make a factor. Pretend like these tanks are connected together pretty well exactly right next to each other so there's really no volume in the pipe. You have to think that way because really these would be slightly lower. I'm not saying there's not a little loss in the system and I'm and, I'm, and I am saying, though, that if you do have actually two tanks, you can measure pretty well exactly 500 PSI in each tank because it's going to equalize, okay? It's going to equalize. So my question is, is did the pipe consume any energy, right? That's, I mean, you can answer that for yourself. Did the pipe consume energy, yes or no? Again, if you, don't, if you don't want to listen to these principles, you're not going to get anywhere with what I'm trying to teach you. Let's move on to the next one. Let's talk a little more realistic. Now, everyone was arguing the point that the motor is, is, is you know, going to convert the energy to heat or convert the energy to movement or whatever it may be. Right now, we have a motor. It's not connected to a shaft or anything. It's just spinning freely, okay? Just spinning freely. If we have 1,000 here and 0 here, and we open up the valve and we let it flow, all right, we're probably going to end up with something like 505 mm, oh, and uh, 495. Um, OK? There's going to be a little bit of pressure left over here than here, most likely especially if this motor doesn't have any mass. And that's purely, I mean, that's purely because the motor needs a little pressure to turn. Okay, so realistically, you're not going to get 100% over there, but it's going to be pretty close. Okay, so I'm not arguing the point that the five difference here is some sort of a consumption. That's not the point here. The point is, is that realistically, there'll be a little more pressure here than here because of the back pressure and the the force needed to move the motor, okay? All right, now the question is, what is the difference between these two? Okay, we talked about this, but I have to repeat it because if you don't grasp this principle, you won't understand anything else I'm showing you. So I'm, I'm asking the question of, did this motor consume the load? If this is a closed circuit, okay, where it's a pipe connected to a motor connected to a pipe, and there's literally this much room between the pipes, there's really no volume there. We don't really calculate too much of the volume. If you did, you might take off like a half a PSI or less. But we're not going to do that. Question is, did the pipe consume the load? No, it did not. It only allowed it to flow. So it's just a restriction. It's just a restriction. 
Did the motor consume the load? No, it's just a restriction. There's no difference between these two. It's just a restriction, okay? Just a restriction. That's it. It's a resistor. It's a restriction. But did it consume the load? Did it, con did it eat up any of the pressure? Did it eat the pressure? Is the pressure not equal if you were to add it up as a total pressure? It's equal. It did not. I mean, if you, you have to grasp this. And you have to think about this on your own. I, don't believe what I say. Think about it yourself. Now, in this process, okay, in this process, on the very first video, I was saying, well, then you could divide these tanks, and you could divide these tanks, and you could divide these tanks. That exercise was a thought experiment, and it was to get you to think about a system, how it reacts, and what goes on. Realistically, you probably can't run the motor longer than the initial time frame because you have half the pressure in two tanks and you need flow, right? You need flow to run the motor. So don't take me the wrong way on that very first video. That first video was really just an exercise. is to get your mind clicking, get your mind thinking. Because if you don't think about this on your own, you won't get it. You have to think about it on your own. You have to make the decision for yourself to believe whether or not this pipe consumed the energy versus this motor consuming the energy. I'm going to leave this alone, but i got to stress this. This is the key fundamental thing that if you don't get, you won't understand. If you start looking at this with a new perspective, you'll actually understand a new idea. That's not my idea, but a new way of thinking about what we're discussing here. Okay. Um, whew, all right, I got that out. Okay. So, all right, boop, we're back to this. If I remove and let this go out to atmosphere, yeah. Oh man, my drawing's terrible. Atmosphere, right? The exact same thing is gonna happen except This will end up. Mm, this will end up at zero psi, and this will end up at five psi. It's no different than a closed system. The energy was released back out to where you grasped it in the first place, to the atmosphere. Okay. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna read something on Wiki that tells you exactly what I'm trying to show you here, and maybe you'll think about that yourself. Maybe I'll stand over here. So. All right, here we are, okay? Um, back to this. Now, I'm gonna read something straight from Wiki so that you can understand where I'm going with this. And hopefully I can express it the way I really want to express it. So I'm on Wikipedia and I looked up self-discharge. I'm gonna read a few lines, I'm gonna skip a few things. All right, self-discharge is a phenomenon in batteries in which internal chemical reactions reduce the stored charge of a battery without any connection between the electrodes. Self-discharge is a phenomenon in batteries in which internal chemical reactions reduce the stored charge of a battery without any connection between the electrodes. Further down it says, self-discharge is a chemical reaction just as a closed circuit discharge is. I'll read it again. Self-discharge. This is self-discharge. The tank is discharging itself to atmosphere with nothing in the way. There's nothing in the way except the, the pipe diameter, which is, again, a resistor. The internal resistance of a battery is the resistor here. It is the pipe, I believe. Just made that one up in my head, but I'm pretty sure that's the way you would think about this. Okay, so if the pipe was connected to atmosphere, 
the energy goes out. That's self-discharge. Now let's look at this one. All right. Self-discharge is a chemical reaction. Again, batteries is the description here. We're just using air as the idea here. Self-discharge is a chemical reaction just as a closed circuit discharge. Okay? So let me ask you. If you let a battery sit, it discharges itself. It's a chemical reaction. If you put a dead short, okay, similar to this, it'd be a little different, but if you put a dead short across the battery, it's the exact same chemical reaction. Therefore, the battery discharges itself. Therefore, the air tank discharges itself. It has nothing to do with this motor. Whether you put a motor in there or you don't, the tank still discharges. Granted, in the air version, we have a little left because of the force needed to turn a motor. Again, this is, a, this is an air motor with like no mass, so it really doesn't have any momentum. Okay? If, if Wikipedia and, uh, you don't have to believe Wikipedia, I'm not saying it's everything, but I'm saying self-discharge in a battery, okay? If you put a load across the battery like a resistor, it only what? It changes the rate at which it self-discharges. This is like the fundamental key to understanding this stuff. Changed my entire vision. It's a big deal, okay? And this is where, most of you don't like this, but this is where you can bring in the biblical stuff. So I'm going to post some stuff down in the description. I'm not even going to say it. Just go look at it. Uh, it's from someone else, and it's describing these principles, and it's where I got my motivation from. Okay. So the tank discharges itself. All right. Whether the motor there is there or not, the tank still discharges. So the motor doesn't consume it. Now, like I said, I never once said that this thing may not be able to convert it, let's say, to heat or some other thing. And by the way, when you release a pressure, when you release a pressure, okay, it actually turns cold. So any heat generated, which is thermodynamics, right? Any heat generated in the motor, okay, is from friction, not the air releasing. Yeah? So up here, if you were to let this go to atmosphere, you'd find that this pipe gets cold, especially if you had a really big volume. This pipe gets cold. Okay? That's why you have to wear huge, thick gloves when you're putting a propane tank, liquid propane, right? It turns from liquid to a gas, and it gets cold when it does that, when it releases back to that, in that phase change. And then and pressurized gas to atmosphere is a phase change of itself, not quite in that same thinking, but it still is. So the motor doesn't consume it, okay? I can't explain it any better. I'm going to move on. Now, um, I don't, do I have this written on? Uh, okay, so let's talk about this while we're on it. And then I'll talk about some of this other stuff. Um, so now, let us... Huh, let us do this. If, if these tanks... Ah, oh, me use different color. If these tanks are caps, capacitors, and this is a resistor, okay? So the pipe is a resistor, okay? And this motor is also a resistor, but now yeah, we're going to tie it to a flywheel. Yeah, so now we've, we've, we've also got a resistor, but we've also got an inductor, right? You've got both. You've got resistance and you've got inductance. Up here you just got pure resistance. What happens in pure resistance? Well, this is what will happen. And by the way, I'm going to demonstrate this on the bench to you. If you watch these videos the rest of the way through, I'm going to demonstrate this. Yeah? So if I have another, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to also have another tank, right? These are the same size in this scenario. Okay. Um, color, purple. All right. Let's talk about the first one. If this is a pure resistor, 
and this is a capacitor, okay? I'm using air, but we're gonna, so we're gonna say voltage if you want. All right, let's change this to volts. Let's just switch it over now, let's do it. Yeah? Um, actually, this still needs to be demonstrated as a motor flywheel, but you have to think about it as purely just an inductor, okay? Because it is a combination of these two elements. All right, so I have a thousand volts. Yeah, a thousand volts. Oh, snap, son, it's a big cap. It's a lot of power in a big cap. Anyway, when you connect the wire, a resistor, whether it be big or small, yeah, it could be 0.1 ohms or it could be a thousand ohms. The only difference is the rate at which the voltage transfers. You can try this yourself, okay? So you'll end up with 500 volts here and 500 volts here. If you put a 0.1 ohm resistor in here, what I've found out is that you actually lose a tiny bit of voltage because you lose it usually in heat. But when I say that, it's going to confuse you because you're going to think now, oh, well, you've, you've consumed it and turned it into heat. No, it's generated its own heat through a means I'm not going to talk about here. But here's the interesting thing. If there's no heat generated and you use 1,000 ohms of resistance, it takes a lot longer, but you will actually get an equal amount of voltage on both sides of this. So ask yourself, this load, again, this is between two potential storage units. Yeah? If you did this, all right, and put your load here, guess what? The battery's going to discharge, and you're going to lose all your potential. It's gone. It's a chemical reaction. You've used it up. So in a capacitor, we don't have that chemical reaction. That's why I like capacitors. OK, and so what happens here? Well, 500 volts and 500 volts. Especially if you have like a 1,000 ohm load, you'll see that these voltages are, but you do lose the potential you had here, which is 1,000 volts to 500 volts, but it's spread across two places now. The point is, is the resistance doesn't consume the load. The load doesn't consume the power, I should say. Now, let's move here. This is the cool thing. If it's purely resistive, you get a split, 50-50. All right? Now, just like in the air analogy, set this paper down. Just like in the air analogy, okay, I hope you guys can see, I might have to zoom in later, but just like in the air analogy, you really have a little bit more here than you do here because there's some back pressure here and there's some things that go on and it doesn't quite work the same. Okay, but in an inductor, you have a flywheel effect. Okay, so when this reaches a midpoint, right, when this reaches half, Okay, you have 500 volts. Okay, and we started with uh, zero, right? And we went to 500. Now, up here when we got to 500, even in almost a dead short condition, you can't transfer anymore because they equal. They balance out just like air. That's why air is such a great way of describing it. However, air is the wrong way of describing it in the end. But people can grasp air gravity is not affected by it as much. <laughs> anyway, so what happens here? When we get to 50 and 50, I'm sorry, 500 and 500 volts, we now have stored potential here. And it acts the exact same way as a pump motor situation. So this thing's spinning. It's got a giant magnetic field built up in it. And let's say we can get somewhere around... Uh, that needs to go down somewhere around um, 100 volts in this one. Well, me, I need to order. Order. I need to do this with a different color. Um, purple. So 100 volts, okay? Then you're going to end up with 900 volts here. Now, if you could, all right, if you could impedance match, match the amount of charge versus the amount of flow, 
right? If you get that just right, the magnetic field is going to build up and it's going to try to push all the other energy through it. It's literally going to turn into a pump and, and, and it's got, it's got, it's like water in a pipe, right? Water down a pipe is really hard to just stop. It's got momentum behind it, right? It's got kinetic energy. That's what this is. Air doesn't have quite as much kinetic energy, but water does, and so does this flywheel. So this flywheel is the magnetism, and is that, well, it actually might not be exactly the magnetism, but it's this motion of stuff flowing, and it's going, okay? And once you start it going, it wants to keep going. In a resistor, you don't have that, but in an inductor, you do. And so, realistically, if it was a perfect system, or close to perfect, and I mean, when I say close to perfect, I mean when you get into the lower values, because there's internal resistance here, so when you get into the lower values, you can do a better transfer, but on the bench, it's hard to use the lower values to show you this in, the, in a demonstration. So what happens is, you'll have a little left here, and you'll have the rest of it here, but here's the thing. I started with a thousand. I have a hundred here and nine hundred here, right? This wasn't doing anything. It got to going. It got to 50-50, and then it started slowing back down because it started building up a charge. And actually, I forgot one really important thing. And we can we can do it for both, but we're just going to draw it in here. Um, right here. Okay. I'm going to draw a check valve, yeah? So flow is this way, current flow is this way, that's check valve for air. This is the important, I forgot to, I wanted you to look at the system the way it was, but I did forget to add this last time and I, I need to do it now. So even if you add a diode here. Okay, I can add it right here. If I add a check valve with air, I know I'm intermixing these two, but it's so you can think about it. So if I had a check valve here, eh, you know, whatever it takes to open the check valve, it's going to balance out in air. And if it's really low, then it's great. It's going to be about equal, both sides. Because you got to remember this is a closed system, yeah? So it's going to always be equal. Okay, so here you got a check valve. What does the check valve do? Okay. When everything starts flowing through the system, all right, it allows it all to pass. If you put it here or here, it does change. It does change things a little bit. Less than you'd think, but it does change things. So we'll put it here, and the flow is going in here. We build up a lot of pressure, okay? We built up all that pressure, and we built it up in kinetic energy in a flywheel, right? And we did that electromagnetically. And then all the charge will flow over to here. Now, I am going to demonstrate this on the bench. And when we get there, uh, it'll be in the next video. I'll demonstrate this on the bench. And I'm using big capacitors, and they have some internal resistance, and so they drop in voltage, so we have to do it fast. And in order to get all or most all of the charge, you know, to get over to there, um, I, I have to use uh, smaller capacitors, which means they drain. And we have to do it fast. But... It, it works, I'll show you. Now, here's the thing. Uh, this, is, this is the last bit of fun information on this particular to topic. This inductor, okay, creates a magnetic field. A matter of fact, if this is a dead short, yeah, it also creates a magnetic field. And a matter of fact, a wire is an inductor, and it, create, it, it can act identically as, as this can in the right scenario, in the right volume here versus inductance here versus resistance and capacitance here. You can actually get this, ex I'll show you, you can get the exact same effect or really close to it in a dead short condition. But it's because of the buildup of this magnetic field in this thinking. Actually, that might be a wrong statement, but I'll leave it in there anyway and kind of tell you later if it's right or wrong, because I'm still thinking about some other ideas with this. But the point is, is you can use it. So the point is, you generate a magnetic field. Yeah? So what I was going to write is 
use it or not. Use it or not is still there. Yeah? So, all right. We have a wheel here. Yeah? We have magnets on it. The basics of a pulse motor, right? You can spin this rotor. Yeah, you can spin it. Or you don't have to. That choice is up to you. If this is very low capacitance and inductance and your oscillating is at a super high frequency, still creates a magnetic field, but it's not as much as if you're using something uh, such as a bigger capacitor and bigger inductor with like an iron core and you could really generate a good magnetism. You could actually put the inductor, um, you know, here with core in there. You can generate a magnetic field. You can use it or you don't have to. That's up to you. That's up to you when you use this system. But the point is, is this coil did not consume the energy. This coil restricts how fast it self-discharges. Okay? When you think this way, when you really think this way, using physics, it gets real interesting, yeah? Physics. It, it, if you can't put your head in here, because your electrical engineering background tells you it can't be true, then do yourself a favor. Turn that off for five minutes and go read about capacitors. And then bring your knowledge back in and go, well, how, how can that work? There's some conflicts here. This is, this is the major one that got me thinking, like, well, okay. Well, you can engineer with it, but you can't do physics with it. It doesn't work the same. It's a different animal. All right, I should make this a two-part video. I'm going to make this a two-part video. I will post them probably back-to-back. -back. Because it, it's just, it, there's too much. I want to make sure those of you who can... Who, who want to understand this can actually get through it. Let me make sure there's nothing else I want to add to this specific video. Um, again, if you can't understand this principle, you won't, you won't understand what I'm, what I'm doing. Physics versus electrical engineering, it's two different animals. They don't coincide. The original Maxwell equations versus the equations we use in the mathematical engineering of electronics differ. And you can look that up how for yourself and all this. But I'm just saying they differ. Someone decided if it works mathematically by fudging it a tiny bit, then let it go. It works. You can do it. I mean, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. It just won't get you where you want to go. Where I'm trying to lead you. Oh, there is one very important thing that I wanted to discuss with you. Everyone just thinks that I'm trying to to show them, or, or, or let me put it this way, I, I'll, not everyone, a lot of people think I'm trying to demonstrate this principle as an overunity of some kind. But I never once said anything about overunity. A matter of fact, how did the 1,000 PSI get in the tank? I didn't say that. I didn't say anything about it. Didn't say anything about it. So I never was trying to express in all the last three videos. <clears throat> three videos, this is four. I didn't bring it up. I didn't talk about how the energy got here. That's for a whole other day, a whole other topic, a whole other, uh, that's the same topic actually, but a whole other thought, a whole other thinking. This is the basic foundation of that. If you want to get there, you have to bear with what I'm showing you. You have to believe that the load doesn't consume the energy and that the battery does indeed self-discharge through the load as a time limiter. 
how fast it self-discharges. You have to do that. Um, oh, this is a good one. I thought of this this morning. Why would I waste my time if I didn't think it was going to work? Okay? I'm not saying it's 100% going to work exactly the way I tell you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, why would I spend so much time expressing this stuff if I didn't think it was going to work? Look back at all my videos. I don't usually go into theory very much. I'm not that type of person. I'm into a, if I can see it on my bench, then it's got to be the right way to think about it. It may be the wrong theory, but it's the right way to think about it. And the right way to think about it is that the load does not consume the energy. <laughs> okay? Um, oh yeah, I should bring that up. I'll bring that up here in a minute. I am going to... Um, I am going to finish this video. I'm not going to make a second video. Um, that's it. I have, I have two more things to talk about. So give me one second. I'm actually going to stop the camera and I'll restart it. I need to find it. So just a second. All right. Here we go. I'm going to read you something that was sent to me. Um, I'm not disclosing who it was. I'm not upset at who it was. And um, actually it's very helpful and I thought it would be a good discussion. So I will not tell you who it is and I uh, am not offending. I'm not offended by it, is what I'm saying. All right, I should sit down, my feet hurt. I don't know if I'll read the whole thing or cut it in pieces here, but here we go. Hi Russ, I have a bit of a question or frustration maybe. I've been watching your channel for a few years now. Before I say anything, I just wanted to clear out that it is not my business on how you do your videos and what you put in them. It's just that I have a bit of frustration with something. Why aren't you focused for once on, focused for once on one free energy or over unity device that works and document the whole build process from start to finish and then release the video in a short and to the point manner in either one long video or several parts. A device that is moderate in complexity, not oversimplistic, but not complicated. Something that, is, something that the average human can follow and replicate in their own home with readily available parts found in most DIY stores. Your videos are extremely bloated time-wise and you start to many things at once and only a few you finish. I mean, that's, if that's your thing, by all means, do that. But it's so frustrating for me as an average guy who's looking out and counting into more knowledgeable people like you to lead the way. You start working on the, and that was supposed to be Abha coil. I was looking with so much interest and waiting one year has passed and nothing yet. Why? I'm sorry that I come across like this. I'm just waiting for someone knowledgeable to release something accessible to replicate at home to help the bills and energy problems. And all I'm seeing from the few guys like you that actually know what they are talking about, this technical and DIY. I'm not going to read that. In DIY stuff, I think it's a misspell. I'm not going to read it. Any advice for me? Well, there's a lot going on here. So the important part here is I've started so many things, right? And you have to get your foot in so many things to understand what you're seeing. If you look at one device, let's, I hate to bring this out. Let's talk about Stan Myers real quick. Dan Meyer. I spent years and years and years and years documenting everything I've done, showing how to build everything I've built, explained all the ideas that I know how to explain it, and the end result is what? Is a lack of understanding of exactly how it works. That's it. If you can't understand how it works, you can't make it work. For instance, I had all the documentation 
like picture wise to, to reproduce stuff pretty well identically and guess what? Reproducing something identically and understanding deeply how it works is a whole nother thing. Okay, for instance, the VIC is a combination of like 20 different very well understood principles built into a system. Okay, starting with the extreme basics. So what I'm expressing is other people have indeed released information to build a system and they build it, they put it together, they just hook up the wires and they go, okay, it should work. But it's, it's not that easy. Maybe one day it will be a little easier. But right now it's not that easy. So the point of these videos is to give you the information, the thought process, the idea, the way to look at something. So that when I later, not claim, but demonstrate something, you'll have the right way to look at it. For instance, I brought this stuff up. I talked about it on the board. It's been three videos now. This is the fourth one. And what has happened? Okay? What has happened? 95% of people that have watched those videos just wrote it off. This guy's a nut. He's, what is he even talking about? He doesn't understand what he's talking about. He's a complete idiot. You know, like, that's okay to say these things and think about these things. But a lot of those people didn't even give a second chance to think about what I'm expressing here. So, and, and honestly, I'm to a point where I could care less if you don't want to listen to what I have to say. Doesn't bother me at all. I'm making these videos for why. Why would, if I, I mean, <laughs> why am I making these videos if I don't really even care, right? Like I said, if you don't believe in something, why waste your time with it? Why would I waste my time in trying to demonstrate a principle that you have to understand in order to get to where you're going? If you, it, this has been my problem for the last nine years or so. I haven't been able to understand this basic principle which changed my entire perspective of looking at things completely changed everything. All the devices I've looked at in the past, I've been looking at them wrong. And now I look at them going, that's why they have the potential to work. A lot of these people, even including myself, let's say last year, couldn't get things to work. Ah, bring up another point. You started working on the rodent coil, and I was looking with so much interest and waiting. One year passed, and nothing yet. Why? Frustration, it's great, this is great. Why? Because I didn't have the answers. I'm just trying to prove what I saw. Now I have more intuition, more base foundational thinking like this to go, ah. Today states the 25th, on the 24th at about 11 o'clock at night, reading a document, of which again I post all these things in the description, reading a document, I realized to myself, oh, that's why, that's how. So what am I talking about? I had this phenomenon, and, I, and, I, and the people who paid really close attention, like probably yourself here, you, you, you may have not even seen this, because I, I didn't publish it directly on this YouTube channel. I published it where? I published it in the live feed as I was doing it, while I was doing it, on the forum, where I discussed this stuff. I posted it there. If you can't spend the effort to deeply dig into this with me, then I can't help you understand it. That's just an unfortunate consequence of wanting to write a check and buy something, which is kind of what you're describing. I want to write a check and I want to buy something. Yeah. Totally. I'm with you, okay. okay, I'm totally with you. But right now, we're not there, I'm not there. I can't do that for you. I'm getting there. I'm trying to share this stuff if people will listen. So look, on uh, on 7-7-16, I'm pretty sure it was, you can go watch the video. Okay, 
That's the right date. On 7-7-16, go watch the live stream on RWG Research Live YouTube channel. It's super long. You want to watch it? You want to understand what I did? Go watch it. Input. Okay? I had an input. Crap, I should have grabbed my notebook. I had an input somewhere around 65 watts. Somewhere in there. Okay? 70, 65 watts. Should have looked at my notebook. But anyway, I had, I had 65 watts of input power into the Abha coil. Yeah? Into this vortex coilish thingamabob. And on the output, and or the other side of the coil, okay? The other side of the coil had a capacitor across it. So it was resonating, okay? By the way, 100 volts peak to peak, okay? On the output, Okay, I had 800 watts of potential in the system as it was resonating, in resonance. Yeah? And I was measuring 2.5 thousand volts peak to peak with only a 100 volt peak to peak input. What was I seeing? Resonance. I can draw the circuit. Okay? Polarity like this. All right? I was measuring volts and um, oh my. I'm so bad. Oh, here we go. Volts and amps. Here I was measuring volts and amps. This is with power factor calculation. What's going on? Well, you know, resonance. I was able to see this phenomenon. I was able to measure it. I was able to believe that I had potential in this system. Now, do you need the Abha coil? No. But the thing is, is just last night, on the 24th, I realized a potential way to extract it. Whether or not it works, well, that, that's up to the bench. But only a little bit of thinking and principal understanding about this can teach you how to extract energy from here. So the question, the, the question, the final thing here, the question is, you know, I'm not technical enough to do all this. I just basically want to buy something. That's basically what you're saying. I just want to buy something. Well, I get it, but somebody's got to manufacture something. Somebody's got to understand it and release it. And unfortunately, I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't want this stuff out there, but the point is, is that you just got to understand it. It's not hard. Building something yourself might be difficult. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying that like, oh, you have to build it. Don't give me, don't, don't take me the wrong way. But what I'm saying is, I, I didn't, I didn't have the answer, so I can't publish anything. I can't make a document and publish it if I don't have the answers. Now, did I ever give up? No, I sat on that. I sat on this, going, there is potential there. And what I realized is, when you connect the other coils that are interwound this is a this is just crazy but it makes sense but it's crazy I mean it's interesting I should say this is this is uh, my gosh I need to do this better so this is interesting uh, in the fact that this is such a high capacity uh, there's so much capacitance in the coil that their capacity their their capacitance coupled coils and they're such high capacitance coupled coils Okay, that the other coils, there's four here if you, if you split them. The other coils, okay, you could leave these disconnected, yeah, and you could get this light to light up. Now ask yourself, ask yourself, how can this light light up? 
if there's no closed circuit, no current flow in the loop. This is an open circuit. How can this light light up? How can this be? I can tell you how. It's because the load doesn't consume the energy. It's in the field. Okay? I cannot describe it any better than that because I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, able to do that at this point in my life. Because I haven't proven to myself on a bench some of the other things I'd like to talk to you about. However, I'm working day and night. I cannot sleep because I'm really excited about this basic principle of the load. The load doesn't consume the energy. How does this light light up? Okay, you need current flow. Now, I know a lot of you electrical engineer guys are going to go, oh, Fine. You can think of it with electrical engineering, but I'm thinking about it using physics, using fields, using energy around it, using other ways of looking at it. I don't fully understand this yet. Just last night, I figured out a way, oh, through reading a PDF, which I'll share with you in the description. Oh, that's how, maybe that's how it works. Maybe that's how it works. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm not ranting, by the way. I'm, I'm not expressing frustration here. I'm expressing how important it is to rethink what you know about what electronic engineering teaches you. Okay? That's it. If you don't get this, if you don't believe in this, if you don't think about this, you shouldn't watch any more of these videos. You won't understand it. And for me, I'm a touchy-feely kind of guy. Okay? That's why I got five kids. Just saying. I like to feel, see, touch the result. So what does that mean? Think of a new way to think about it and prove that to yourself on the bench. Okay? Now I'm going to get into the last thing I really do want to talk about. I really want to talk about this because it's important. I bring up the Bible and everyone's like, oh, right now, about 15, 20 of you just went, stop. Jeez, don't freak out so fast. Okay? Because there's two things you can think about. You can think about faith, okay? And you can talk about religion. I'm not trying to push religion at you. I'm trying to push having faith in something. Have faith that this is explained correctly and have faith that works on the bench. Prove it to yourself so that your faith grows. Okay? It's the same way. Read the Bible. Have faith in what it says. It teaches you principles like this. And that's why I bring it up. Okay? And, and it's just... You, you either have faith in that this works or it doesn't. But if you prove it to yourself on the bench, how can you deny it? Okay? And that's what faith has done for me through the Bible. Yeah? The Bible has taught me how to be faithful through testing, trying, seeing. Does it work? Is this real? Can I really do that? It's not a judgment. It's a, holy crap, that actually worked. Most of you don't like me using holy crap, but, you know, it's not a curse word, is it? Anyway, so that's, that's, that's it. I just want to, I really, uh, this, is, this is just me expressing my thoughts, feelings, ideas, understandings. And this, this guy, person, lady, who I don't even know, who sent me this email, this message, I appreciate this. Because it is, it's a frustration. And I appreciate that. But have faith, you know. You've obviously been watching for years, so have faith. For those of you who have been watching years, have faith in trying to do the right thing. My stuff's always been open source. I've always been trying to share this information. I've always just trying to be doing good things. I've been learning through my own faith, right, and my own belief. But why do I believe it? It's because I've tested it. I've tried it. There it is. Oh my gosh, it works. How can I deny it? Do I understand it? No, not exactly, but it works. You don't have to be religious to be faithful in something like the Bible. Some of you will argue that point, but I'm just saying, if you want to put it that way in your head, do it. 
because there's a lot of really good information there that can lead you to understanding this. Again, I will link you in the description for where those two things get tied together extremely well. Not my videos, someone else, where some of this inspiration, a lot of this inspiration came from. And then realizing it and going, oh, what? How can that be? Let me go test it on the bench. Okay, peace and love. God bless. Thank you for watching. This has been exciting for me to express these thoughts because for years and years and years, I haven't been able to understand it in my head and I understand it in my head enough to teach you. All you have to do is listen. Yeah? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make that horse drink. If you don't want to drink, it's your, it's your choice. But I'm leading you to the water. <laughs> All right, love you guys. See you later. Next time, we're on the bench showing you some practical demonstrations of this. At least that's my goal.